Okay, so what we've got over here is our scene, and now the only way to move is left and right using W, A, S, D keys, sorry, not W and S, but A and D keys, and we also got the right arrow and left arrow on the other side of the keyboard, but now, what if we are on a mobile device? This is something that we can't do. So we are going to go ahead and just code a little bit inside the player motor today. So let's go ahead and open up the player motor.cs. Okay, so let's spot exactly where we need to change this. We move using what we call a move vector. Now in our update, we set that move vector back to zero, and then we check, okay, for left and right, are you pressing on an axis, that is W, A, S, D, sorry, A and D, and left and right? That's exactly where we do this. But now, what if we're on a device? We don't have these keys, we don't have these axes. What we're going to do is we're going to tell our game, if we're holding click on the left side of the screen, then moves me toward the left. If we're holding on the right side of the screen, then moves me toward the right. And the way we're going to do this is fairly simple. So let's just write another line. Let's just um, imagine that really quickly. We've got a sealed class that has um, information containing the screen. Now the screen changes depending on what you're playing on. So if you're playing on Windows, then it's going to take your screen, your, your computer screen, right? And if you're playing on Android, then it's going to take your phone screen. So that has information on, um, say, the height and the width. Now, the only thing we're really interested in is the width. Having this, we know that um, we know what, what size is our screen. Now, input has also another information that we'll take, input dot mouse position. Mouse position is going to tell us where exactly is our mouse in our screen. Now, this works also for touches on a uh, device. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be using those two information to write a if statement. Okay. So if, let's start with if input dot get mouse button, we're not going to do down, we're not going to do up. We want to know every single frame that uh, a mouse button is down. And let's do the uh, left click in this case. That is also the first touch on a device. If somewhere in our screen is pressed, then we're going to say if input dot mouse position dot x is say um, bigger than screen dot width divided by two. So if my position in the screen of my mouse right now is bigger than half of my screen, that means we are on the right side. Are we holding click? or touch on the right side. And if that's the case, let's go ahead and say move vector dot x is equal to one. Else move vector dot x is equal to minus one. And well, as, you know, as soon as we have a mouse holding down, uh, as soon as we have a touch on the screen, then we have to either move left or right. And this is going to determine which side we're moving. Let's try this on the PC before we can actually build that to the device. So I'm going to hit play and then click on the left side and hold. As you can see, we're moving, but we're moving so very slow. That is because uh, I've made a mistake. So basically I have to go back here and we're not saying one, we're saying speed and a minus speed over here. All right, so back in our game, let's go ahead and hold on approximately here, so really close to the player. And as you can tell, I was moving. This is the turning point right there. Now I'm just going to hold my click, and as you can see, as soon as I move my mouse towards this side, right here is the turning point. Right. So we got this working. Now let's go ahead and build this on a device. In order to build this to Android device, you need quite a few things actually. You need to have um, Android SDK installed, you need to have your driver installed for your phone. This is different for everybody, uh, depending on your phone brand, of course. I'm using a Nexus 5, so I had to download the USB driver for Google. Now, I'm not going to cover how to do that because this is quite a really, um, 
it's quite a big topic actually so what I'll do I'll, is I'll just show you how to do it once everything is set up you are going to go under build settings you choose Android down here and then you have to go under player settings and you have to come down here and type in a bundle identifier so it goes like com dot n3k which is company name and then product name which is endless runner in this case it doesn't have to be exactly this but this is what people use most of the time and then you can also force a rotation so on my phone I'd like this to be always landscape uh, right why not and then once everything is done, once every information is set in there, we can go ahead and just build this. So I'm going to hit build and run, save my APK somewhere, and then we are going to move ahead to the webcam and take a look at this when it's done building, of course. Okay, so right now on the device, we get this kind of result over here. So I'm um, sorry about the quality. I can't do really nothing about it. So I'm going to hit play. And then as you can tell, I can click left and right like this, and it actually works. So everything is, sounds fine. Now I've did a score of 7. If we take it to the menu, I've already had a high score of 143, but now if I quickly um, kill this application, so here I am going to swipe this, oh, which direction? The high score is still there. So basically this works too. All right. So here we go guys, we've created a really fast, really simple handless runner game um, just like that. It only has a high score, there's not many feature, but at least we learned how to do it and we also pushed it on the phone, which is a good thing. And um, if we just take a quick look at, like say, a post-mortem of what we could do to improve this, well of course we could be creating way more prefabs in this, I've only created three and that was for testing purpose. Um, never ended up making more, but what else could we be doing? we could um, actually start pooling these tiles so if we just boot the game really quick as you can tell over here oh never mind if I stop to maximize as you can tell over here in the tile manager we always delete everything and then we create a new one now that's not really optimal in the best world what is usually going to happen um, well if you're gonna make your game super optimized is you're never going to delete a tile instead you're going to turn it off like so so say we're about to delete this tile the one in the back over here watch the one the player is on instead of deleting it we actually simply turn it off and then if we need another normal bridge later on we actually just tell this guy okay I'm gonna turn you back on and you're gonna assume the next position so uh, it might be over here right and that's usually what happens when it's really optimal. But right now, this was a um, this was a really friendly tutorial. This was a really easy tutorial, so we didn't cover that. But that's something we could also do. And like I said before, we could have some more prefab as well, and clean up art. There's always a lot of cleaning up on art to do. There's always a bunch of things we could be doing on that side, of course. Well, guys, thanks a lot for watching. This is going to be the end of the endless runner tutorial. And um, I would just like to say thank you for all your support you've been giving me so far. It's been an amazing year. We almost hit 2,000 subscribers. And I plan on keeping going. So guys, thanks for watching. And the next one is going to be about multiplayer. So that, so that is something you might want to look for as well. Alright guys, see you later.